Hey everyone! So what are some tips that you should follow when you're trying to write a great personal statement for your grad school applications? Watch this video and you'll find out. So why did I decide to make this video and why did I decide to make a video like this this early in the year? So far before the actual grad school application deadlines. To answer the first question, why did I make this video? One of the most common questions I've gotten over the years is, how do I write a good statement of purpose? Where do I begin? And so this video is to help address that question. To answer the second question, the reason I made this video this early in the year, and the reason why you might want to watch the video right now, even though you have many months until the actual deadline, is that when you watch this video, it might change how you want to spend the next couple months in preparation for writing the statement of purpose, whether it be spending the next couple months trying to find a research opportunity or an internship, you want to have uh, some time to accumulate the experiences you need so that you have good content that you can include in this personal statement. Had I released this video uh, right before the deadline, like a week before, and you saw the video and be like, oh, well, I don't have the experiences I need to write this statement of purpose, it would be too late. So hopefully uh, watching this video this early will be helpful. Make sense? So what am I gonna cover today in this video? It's pretty simple agenda. To start off, I'm going to answer a few common questions that I get about the statement of purpose for grad school. Next, I'm going to explain what a PhD statement of purpose is. And after that, I'm going to explain some important points that you should make sure to cover when you are writing your statement of purpose for grad school. Now I'm sure there are lots of other resources out there, videos, blogs, explaining how you should go about writing a statement of purpose. So you might ask me, well, how is this video different from any of those other resources? And the answer is, I don't know. And that is by design. The reason I chose not to read any of those other blogs, any of those other, uh, and watch any of those other videos before making this video is because I wanted to make sure that I'm giving you advice that I used myself. Uh, I went through the application process firsthand. Um, I was relatively successful. I got into all the schools I, I really wanted to get into, like Stanford, Berkeley, MIT, uh, UCLA, uh, to name a few. And so uh, I didn't want a situation where I read uh, someone else's blog and then gave you information that I didn't necessarily use. But I still encourage you to look elsewhere, look at other resources to see like what other tips are out there. And if you know there is some overlap of information between this video and uh, those blogs, uh, then you'll know that that piece of information is probably um, very good information. So to answer one common question that I've gotten about the statement of purpose, a lot of people ask me, how important is the statement of purpose relative to the other parts of the application? And the answer is, uh, it depends. And that's an honest answer. For one thing, it depends on the reader reading your application because different readers might weigh uh, the essay a little differently. And secondly, it can depend on the applicant. For instance, uh, if there is a student and their grades are stellar, they have lots of research experience, they published, they have a letter of recommendation from a professor who's like, you have to admit the student. Uh, that student could probably get in with a statement of purpose that is, you know, average or mediocre. On the other hand, if there's a student uh, whose grades aren't that great, uh, who has no research experience, has not demonstrated uh, in their resume that they care about you know, going to grad school, they might have a tough time getting in to the school, even if their statement of purpose is super well written. So it depends. That being said, a statement of purpose is the only opportunity that you have in the whole application that is not just quantitative or, or listing out awards. It's an opportunity for you to express yourself uh, and to not just be you know, a bunch of numbers and a bunch of stats. So this is an opportunity to put your best foot forward. So you should do the best you can with your statement of purpose. The second question I've gotten is, who is the audience? Who are we writing this for? The admission committee composition can vary from school to school, but you can probably count on a large part of that 
admissions committee to be professors. They have a large say in who gets into the school and uh, who gets into the program and who doesn't, especially when it comes to PhDs. Um, there might also be some grad students and some staff members, but large, a large part of the admissions committee are professors. So if you're trying to write about the research that you've done, you can show off a little bit uh, to express like that technical side of you. But of course, don't overdo it because just because these professors, these, some of these readers are, are technical, they might not specialize in the specific research that you are doing. But you can count on uh, the readers having some technical background. Another common question I get is, how many prompts do you usually have to answer? How many essays do you have to write? And the answer is, usually there's one main prompt where you can explain you know, why you want to go to grad school, why you're qualified, why you would do well. That is the main one. And they might have uh, another, a smaller prompt. For instance, I think when I applied to Stanford, they had a smaller prompt that was uh, asking about diversity. Uh, but in this particular video, I'm going to cover the main prompt because that is consistent across most of the programs that you're applying to. And that is where uh, a bulk of the weight will be when it comes to looking at applicants from the committee side. Okay, so I think that covers it for the most common questions on statement of purpose. So let's actually look at an example of a prompt uh, that you will be answering in your statement of purpose. So I'm here on Stanford's graduate admissions website, and uh, we're going to look at an example of a, a prompt. And so I think this might have been what I answered when I applied. Actually, I think it is. Um, so it reads, describe succinctly your reasons for applying to the proposed program at Stanford, your preparation for this field of study, research interests, future career plans, and other aspects of your background and interests, which may aid the admission committee in evaluating your aptitude and motivation for graduate study. The maximum recommended length is a thousand words. All right, so a thousand words. Um, I think that equates to a little less than two pages, single-spaced, if you're using size 12 font. I went back to Word and I was looking at it. So that, that's about the length of what you're trying to write uh, maximum. So don't worry, we're going to break this down in detail later. Uh, right now, we're just quickly going over this prompt. And so you'll notice a couple things. So from looking at this prompt, we can see generally that we are answering a few questions, okay? We are answering, why do we want to go to grad school? And why are we applying to Stanford in particular? And along the way, we want to explain to them what we have done to demonstrate why we are a good fit for this program and why we want why we are a good fit for grad school in general because they want to see how motivated you are to continue your education beyond college and this example is from Stanford graduate admissions but pretty much every grad program that you apply to whether it's Stanford or some other school they're all going to ask a question of this form and so I actually remember pretty much using the same statement of purpose for almost uh, all of my schools with tweaks, with minor tweaks um, to make them more school specific. And I'll explain that in detail a little later. Okay, so now that we've seen the actual prompt, what are the important points that we need to make sure to cover when we are writing our statement of purpose? So I'm gonna basically you know, list out the important points that we should remember. I'm going to use Roman numerals, but they very well could have just been bullet points. And then we'll, we'll just go through each of these points one by one. So in your statement of purpose, you got to start off with, of course, your intro. Okay. This is Roman numeral one. I'm sure that, you know, in high school or college, you have experience writing essays. And of course, you need to start off with an introduction, sort of introducing yourself and your background and just a general summary of why you want to go to grad school. After the intro, what should we be focusing on? So one important thing that we need to answer and convince the reader is, why do we want to do a PhD? What is our motivation? These programs, they don't want students who are gonna come in and drop out like the first year. They want students who can convince them uh, that they're really serious about this and they're gonna stay in, stay in it until graduation, okay? So, so how should you go about answering the question, why PhD, why master's? 
What is your motivation of, for going to grad school? There are many different ways that you can answer this question, and you might have many reasons. One way that you can talk about it is talking about a personal story. For instance, uh, there might be a student who is studying in the biomedical field um, and very focused on a particular medical condition because it has impacted someone that they cared about, like a family or a friend. Another reason that a student may be motivated to continue grad school, uh, specifically a PhD, is that they'd like to become a professor in the future. Um, that is a career path that they're very interested in, and they will require spending more time in research, spending more time teaching, so that they can pursue that particular dream. What is another example? A student could have worked on a research project, or a class project, or participated in an internship where they worked on something that was really interesting that allowed them to exercise the problem-solving skills, and they wish to continue, uh, continue more problem-solving in the future in, say, grad school, a master's or a PhD. So there's lots of different ways you can answer it, but it's very, very important that you convince the committee members like, why you are motivated to continue grad school. Like, why do you want to do a master's? Why do you want to do a PhD? What's stopping you from dropping out after a year? They want people who, who want to be there. So what is the next point that we need to talk about? The next point that you should address in your statement of purpose is, why are you a good fit for grad school? Like, why are you qualified? Okay, so. Now, now there is uh, some overlap between this point here and the point above like why the motivation, right? For instance, you can talk about your research. Like I completed this research problem. I solved this issue, okay? But this is also an opportunity for you to talk about your accomplishments. For instance, if your research project won a particular award, or if you were able to make a publication as a result of the work that you did on a particular project, this is more, this is an opportunity to sort of toot your own horn there is an awards section where you can list out what you've accomplished in another part of your application, but this is an opportunity for you to describe it in more detail and give it a little more color. You want to convince the committee members that, look, I have accomplished so much in college, and look at my track record. I want to continue accomplishing more things once I go to grad school. All right, now what is the next important thing that you should talk about. And this is something I really, really want to emphasize, okay? And that is, you want to answer, why do you want to go to this particular institution? Okay, if you're applying to Stanford, why Stanford? If you're applying to MIT, why MIT? If you're applying to UCLA, why UCLA? So, now why am I emphasizing this particular point? So when I was applying to grad school, there was actually one program that I did not get into, okay? Ironically, I got in for college, but I did not get into their grad program. Looking back at my application, I realized that there was one important issue that I forgot, which was I did not try and show myself as a good match for that particular institution. There was no research topic that seemed to fit my background. Let's say that you're interested in studying a particular topic, if there is no professor at that school who's studying that topic or is interested in pursuing that topic, then likely it's not a good match between the student and the institution. And I think that's what happened in this case. And so it is important that when you are applying to a particular school, you should take some time to do some research on their website to see which professors are there at that institution and what topics do they work on. And is there any a field in the department that you are interested in, any project that you see yourself working on. It might take a little extra time to do some research, checking the school's website and tailoring your essay to fit each individual school, but it's totally worth it. And it doesn't even take too much to do it, maybe just a couple of sentences describing the specific field at that institution that you'd like to work on. I've pretty much covered all of the points I wanted to. Finally, you'd probably do some sort of a conclusion, okay? Again, this is sort of just listing out points that you should think about when you're trying to create your statement of purpose. This is not like a template or an outline that you have to follow, okay? Everyone has their own style, but these are some important questions that you should definitely address when you are uh, writing your statement of purpose. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. 
Um, good luck with everything and uh, have a nice day.